All right, let's try this again. Base. All right. So now it's showing a little bit of white bars. Let me fix that real quick. Trying to get these, rid of these damn black white bars. All right, well, I might as well stick with it. Fix that donation goal. Should be good. All right. Today we're going over the project settings and Unreal Engine Four. Right. Right. Here we go. So today we're going over the project settings in Unreal Engine 4. Make sure my mic is on. It is on. So we're going over the project settings in Unreal Engine 4. So to get to your project settings, we're going to go to you can go to file. You go to file. Patrick. You can. I meant. You can go to edit. Project settings. Oh, somehow it didn't show up on. Time real engine thing. Gotta go over this one more time. Edit. Talk about edit a minute. Let me see that. See that opens up. It's an Unreal Engine thing. No, it's OBS. I had to change the settings. Let's try this again. Edit. Try 
and check. Damn OBS thing. Properties. Titles must match. Okay. Edit. Try it again. See if that helps. Alright, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mute that and I'm going to do a display capture. Just for now. Let's see if this helps with a display capture. Edit. Project settings. Click project settings. I gotta use a display capture. Stop. All right. Give you guys a chance to catch up. Alright, so we're in our project settings. We're going to start off with description. Where is this? Our project name? Third person BP game template? We're going to change this. We're going to name change the title. Whatever title you name of the game, that's where you gotta title it. For this one, I title Survival Horror, so I'm gonna type in Survival Horror. Typo. And the project version, every time you update your project version, like, you, like, you do, like, you create a new level, you gotta change the project version number, like example, like version 1.1.0.0, 1 .1 and so forth. So we're gonna leave it at 1.0.0.0. Leave at the current, and your company name. We we'll go to the publisher, the company name. I mean, it's Jumpjump Games LLC. We can skip this for now. Is this going distinguished name means is name of company, author, provider. The homepage means your the website and your support contact with your with your email and the copyright notice. Put your copyright notice the year you created the project, current year is 2018. Copyright 2018. Turn on gains. I see all rights reserved for the licensing terms and privacy policy. We can ignore that. We can get to these two later. For the settings, we can leave, leave these by default. If you're doing this in VR, you can check this. For the borderless window, do not check this. We're going to go to Maps and Bones. Don't worry about the gameplay tags and, and the developer.
in our default modes. And our project maps and modes. You should have the current maps and modes. And our default maps should be the third person example map. If not, click down. If you have the starter map or any of these other previous maps, click the drop down. It's like third person example map, same thing for the game default. If you're using, if you're creating a multiplayer, you can use it as split screen. We're not creating a multiplayer, a multiplayer game, so we're gonna uncheck that. And that should be it for maps and modes. In the movies tab, if you have a movie like Powered by Unreal Engine 4 movie, you can have two options. You can wait for the, for the player to launch the game, and they can either wait for the movies to complete, or you can have them skip the movies. So we're going to get this to later. We'll, we'll go further in the series. And now for our packaging settings. I'm going to go back to OBS Studio and go back to the other. Go back to Window Capture. How's that? We're good? Or should we stick with the window capture or display capture? Alright, for our project packaging settings, for now our build configuration is still in, under development. Keep it under development once we have our, our game completely developed. We're going to switch from development to shipping. Right now, give it under development, the development stage. For our staging directory, so will be will be the directory where the package package project will be copied to to our computer. We want to choose a directory. We'll go to our Unreal Project one. I want you to go to Unreal Projects folder and click name title of your project that you just created and select and click select folder and it will it will direct where the project will save and for the full rebuild it's going to rebuild the game is going to build the game, it means it's going for the, um, if we build the game for Windows, iOS, and, no, iOS, Windows, Mac, or Linux, that's going to go for computers. For this, for distribution, it's going to go to the App Store or, like, App Store like iOS, Android, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. Or PS4. So for, for for Windows, we're going to do the full rebuild, but we're going to get to it to later on in the series. For our packaging, we're going to use the pay, pack file, which is checked by default. For for these others, we're going to leave these alone for now. Blueprints. These two should be left alone. For prerequisites, get this checked by default, and that should be it for the packaging settings. But we will come back to the packaging settings later on in the series. Now we we'll go to the support of platforms tab, which will have all the different platforms. 
that you can choose. There's Android Desktop, HTML5, iOS, Linux, Mac, PlayStation 4, Switch, TV OS, Windows, and Xbox One. You can mess around with these settings. Um, the three, the four, um, the ones we're going to be on checking is Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PS4, HTML5, iOS, all des desktop, and Android, and TV OS. If you if you have to, if you're on Mac, you can check this, but if you're on Windows, uncheck it. Because we'll be developing for Windows and Linux for the project. If you're developing for Xbox One, PS4, and or Switch, you can check those. For Xbox One, you must fill out an application to distribute your game to Xbox, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. is going to do the same thing, but you got to do something different. And that should be it for the, the supported platforms tab. Now, our target hardware, which we leave it alone, should be the same. Now let's go to our asset method, um, manager. If we look to our primary asset type scan, we got seven members and directories. These should be left alone. Should be should be left by default. All these this should be left by default. And now for the engine AI system, we should have the same settings as mine. If not, if this has the A has the AI AI hotspot manager, make sure you switch that to none. And make sure your perception system class should be AI perce perception system. And that should be it for the AI AI system. Now we're gonna go to our animation tab. And you should have the same settings as mine in the animation tab. We're just going over the project settings in Unreal Engine 4 today for today's live stream. Come on, damn it. I gotta tweet this out. Whoops, by, that was by accident. Now, nope. make sure I tweet that out. I should tweet it when I first started the live stream. All right, we're good now. All right, once you get the same settings as mine, we can go to our audio tab. And now you should have, we'll begin to our audio tab in the engine real soon. I, I'm going to experiment with the audio tab in the engine alone, then I'll live stream that's and later in the series you should have this by default now we're going to go to our collision tab and the collision you got you will have object channels and trace channels you can create to 18 custom channels for objects and traces and you can create your preset, and here are your presets. You get the no collision, block all, 
overlap all, block all dynamic, overlap all dynamic, ignore, only pawn, overlap only pawn, the pawn, and there's others, presets you have, where you can create new object channels and new trace channels. Now we're going to go to the console. You should have got, got you have the general, the scroll back, your max scroll back size should be 1024, and your manual auto complete list should have 131 A ray elements. Should have zero to to 130, the autocomplete map pass should be content and maps, and your background call background opacity percentage percentage should be 85. Then you can mess around the colors if you, if you want. For me, I'm gonna leave it leave it same. Then we're gonna go to our cooker tab. I haven't messed with the cooker settings and the project settings. If we go to our cooker, it says enable cooker cooking via network and background of the editor. Launch on using these settings requires device to have network access to the editor, which is enable cook on the side. I'm not sure what that is, but I haven't messed with it. You get the generate DDC data and background for desired launch on platform speeds up launch on and you got iterative cooking for build launch on the, from the editor if we click down here you got more of these you should have the same thing as me and you got the textures your PVRTC compression quality should have one. Your ASTC compression quality versus speed should have one. Your ASTC compression quality versus size should be at three. Now we're going to go to our crowd manager. Our, conf our config should be by default, which would be recommended. Now for our end user settings. Now people have been saying about the end users and user settings. We must read the must read this between don't send and send. You can allow users to opt out by adding this setting to your game UI and calling you and user settings which will send anonymous data, data to Epic for their information they run on your product, which is to, to the servers. So I recommend having end users sent to Epic checked. Uh, for the privacy details, send mean time between failure data to Epic Allow user ID and user data. If you hover, what I said about send mean time between failure data to Epic, it de determines whether the engine sends anonymous crash abnormal shutdown data about game sessions to Epic Games in order to improve Unreal Engine. Information will never be shared with third parties. So I recommend checking this. So the user's information will be protected at all costs because everybody's information should be protected for privacy reasons. If we go to our de de gameplay debugger, you should have our, we've got our input and our display. And you got your keyboard shortcuts for debugging. For your debugger for gameplay, you should have a apostrophe for the activation. And for your display, you got the debug canvas. Should be 10. 
and your add-ons should be the same as mine. Now we will go to our garbage collection tab. For our general, time between purge and pending kill objects should be at 60. Flush streaming on GC should be unchecked. Number of retries before forcing GC should be at zero. I recommend having these settings on by default. And now if we go to our general settings, you can up for the fonts you can up drag and drop your fonts and drag and drop your fonts by going to your third person example map. There's a third person BP blueprints, right clicking new folder and type in type in fonts and click enter. And you can click import to, and find the font you want. But we go about importing fonts to Unreal Engine later in the series. Your fonts should be Roboto by default. And your default classes, your console class should be console, game viewport client class should be game viewport client, and your local player class should be local player. Your world settings class should be world settings. Your level script actor class should be level, level script actor. It should have the same other settings as mine. And for subtitles, if you have subtitles, you can check this. As of right now, we've got no subtitles. We're going to uncheck it. And the rest should be save. And for screenshots, we you save it to your Unreal Project Survival Horror Game folder that will save the screenshots. We will go to our inputs, we will go to our imports inputs later on the se later on the series. How we add inputs, different inputs, and you, how we can put the code at the functionality for each one. And our navigation mesh should be by default. Next, we're going to go to our, our navigation system. Crown Manager class should be Crown Manager. Create navigation data should be checked. Everything else should be beyond by default. And now for the network, verify peer should be checked. Multiplier world origin rebasing should be unchecked, and the others should by should by uh, should by uh, should by by default. And the Niagara settings should be all by default. And now, if we go to our physics tab. These settings should be rec should be left alone, left alone by default. But you all can experiment with the settings if you want. But I recommend do not mess with the settings. But you all fully welcome to mess with the settings if you want. Now we're gonna go over to our rendering settings. If you're developing for mobile, you can mess around with mobile. Settings, our materials, game discards and unused material quality levels, and their second normal should be unchecked. And the, I need a drink real quick. Time to try.
I recommend leaving the other settings by default. If you want to know more of these other settings, you can look up on YouTube on the rendering settings on Unreal Engine 4. But y'all can pretty sure that's around with the settings to experiment with them. Now if we go to our rendering overrides local, these must be left by default. Our slate settings, our constraint canvas, explicit canvas child Z order, we're going to leave that unchecked by default. If we go to our streaming tab, async loading thread enabled should be unchecked. Event driven loader enabled should be checked. Use background level streaming should be checked. Now, if you want to do more, to, want to get familiar with more of Unreal Engine, go to your project settings. Under here, where it says tutorials, we're under the tutorials tab. Where it says start up tutorial, click the none. There's different things that you want. You can learn about. There's adding code, blueprint editor, interface editor, macro, class blueprint, content browser, creating, signing, and many more. It'll show you how to install iTunes, Visual Studio. If you need to know how to install Visual Studio, Go to Project Settings, go to File, or go to Edit, Project Settings, Tutorials, go to Startup Tutorial, click None, click Install in Visual Studio Tutorial. And there's many other tutorials you can learn. You can learn about the Particle System, Skeletal Mesh Editor, Skeleton Mode, all that. Now we're going to go to our user interface. Our render focus rule should be navigation only. And the other should be left by default. And the editor 2D, if you're doing a 2D game, um, I'm pretty sure there, was, there are tutorials on how to what the best settings for the 2D edit for the editor settings for the 2D. Now if we go to our appearance, these these two should be by default. Now if we go to our blueprints, use compilation manager should be checked by default because we really need to use compile compile all our blueprints. And our class viewer should be by default. List of directories to consider consider internal only should have three array elements. If you expand it, should have the VR editor, the sequencer, not for licenses. And list of base classes to consider internal only should have two array elements. Expand that. Should have the VR editor base user widget and a level sequence burning. Now to our level sequences tab. Our timeline, our default start time, and our default duration should be at the recommend default settings. Zero seconds and five seconds. And the shots should be by default. Our FBX settings should have one array elements and two members. And the path should be by the same, by default. Now if we go to our mesh simplification, our mesh reduction plugin should be quadrant mesh reduction. That should be on by default. Our paper 2D, we're not going to go to paper 2D because we're not doing no paper 2D. 
a widget designer. We click that t uh, click that tab. The quick slow construction widget tree should be checked by default, and your designer debug resolutions should have 13 array elements. And each one should have four members. And our class filtering show widgets for from engine content should be unchecked. Show widgets from developer content should be checked. And widget classes to hide should have zero array elements. And now we're going to our platforms. We're going to go to our windows first. For our targeted RGI, our RHIS, we get the direct direct X11 and direct X10. These two should be checked by default. And our compiler version, which is by default, we're going to change this to Visual Studio 2017 if you have Visual Studio 2017 installed or 2015. I recommend having Visual Studio 2017 installed. Because it's required, Visual Studio is required for Unreal Engine this to work. Our splash, you can edit your editor splash and gain splash. I will show you how to make an editor splash for Unreal Engine 4 in Photoshop uh, in a video soon. I'm probably record that later today and get that edited, upload it tomorrow. And your game icon, you can customize the game icon if you take a screenshot from your game. And there's a website you can put it as a ICO. An ICO file and upload it and it tells you the dimensions of the icon. Should be 256 by 256. My audio device. You drop down, it should be coming up with your default audio device. We're going to click that. And your and the other settings of your audio should be recommended, it should be, be there by default. Your audio mixture sample rate should be at 48,000. Your callback buffer size should be 1024. Number of buffers to enqueue should be 1. Max channels should be zero. Number of source workers should be four. To our Linux, all these should be by default. If you get this error, it says no image at whoever. Don't worry about that. It will be there. Just leave the icon by default. Now, our plugins, we're going to go too deep into our plugins later on series. Once you're satisfied with your settings, satisfied with settings, just exit out the project settings. Now you up here, you guys have saved current level, your source control, your content, content browser, your marketplace, which you can get um, your plugins, templates, all the other cool assets you can get from the marketplace. And there's your settings. You click drop down from settings. There's world settings, project settings, plugins, and others. That uh, check should be on by default. Your real time audio. Should be on. If it's muted, make sure you scroll up the real time audio. And there's your scalability. Make sure your resolution, your quality should, for all these should be set to low. And there's your blueprints. There's a new empty blueprint uh, class. 
open blueprint class, open level blueprint, game mode, edit third person game mode, game mode not overwritten, which we're going to get to the game mode later on, and the level blueprint, which you have our cinematics, our build, which will be building our lighting, our reflections, static visibility, our geometry, navigation, our article LOD, our texture streaming, our automation, our verification. If we click these three, these two arrows, you should have play and launch. And your launch options. You can create should have your default on your current device. So basically that's all I want to go over the project settings in Unreal Engine 4. That's all I wanted to go over today. It's the Unreal Engine 4 project settings. And tomorrow we'll be doing um what is it the hunger system? The player hunger system, which is tomorrow's. Yep, so tomorrow will be the player hunger system tutorial in Unreal Engine 4. Alright, so all I basically want to do is go over the project settings, one of my recommended settings of the project settings, all that. So thank you guys for joining in. Um, make sure you stay tuned tomorrow for the player, player hunger system, I'm going to engine or tutorial um, live stream. Stay tuned for a special video that I'll be uploading today. I'll see you guys later.